To celebrate the new Canadian Confederation in 1867, a patriotic poetry contest was held by the Caledonian Society of Montreal. Alexander Mir, a school teacher and soldier, needed a poem to participate. As he walked in the street in front of his house in Toronto, he noticed a huge maple leaf tree. According to some, he was walking with his friend, James Leslie, and one leaf from that tree fell on his shoulder. His friend said, There, Mir, there's a text. The maple leaf is the emblem of Canada. Bear your text on that. In fact, the maple leaf became the emblem of the French Canadians after the founding of La Société Nationale de Saint-Jean-Baptiste. It was an association that celebrated the French Canadian culture. It later became the official emblem of Lower Canada. In 1848, the literary annual The Maple Leaf refers to the maple leaf as a chosen emblem for Canada and featured a golden maple leaf undercover. As the Prince of Wales, Edward VII visits Canada in 1860, many Canadians wore the maple leaf during the royal visit to identify themselves as Canadians. After his walk, Mayer quickly wrote his poem and added to Montreal when he finished second in the poetry contest. The music was later found as he was looking for inspiration in local music stores. He later shared his poem around the country and over time it became the unofficial national anthem of Canada. It was popular among the English-speaking Canadians. It was sung by so many soldiers during the World War I and was even taught in school. Even though it was extremely popular, it was never the official national anthem but was still seen as the national anthem of the country. It wasn't as liked by the French Canadian population. Indeed, it was seen as an anti-French song due to the lyrics. For example, the first verses celebrate James Wall's conquest of Quebec during the Battle of the Plains of Abraham in 1759, of which the French lost new friends to the British. Also, the third stanza mentions the British victories during the War of 1812 at the Battle of Queenston's Heights and the Battle of Lance's Lane. Finally, Mears paid tribute to the colonial ancestors of Canada by noting the floral emblems of Scotland, Ireland and England, with no mention of the Fleur d'Elysée when the French also founded Canada. There is also the fact that the maple leaf, an emblem previously used by the French Canadians, was the main subject of a poem that ignored the contribution to the Canadian history. In summary, the maple leaf forever was a love song to the British ancestors of Canada. To include the French-speaking population in the song, a poem made by Octave Cremazie, named Salut ma belle patrie, was paired with the melody of Mir's Maple Leaf Forever. It was renamed Choix de Chanson. Moreover, later versions of the songs included the real Lily. Therefore, the new verse was Lily, Thistle, Shamrock, and Rose and Twine. In reality, most people still sing the song without mentioning the Lily. Also, no French translation of the poem can be found. In 1997, a contest was held by CBC Radio to make the lyrics more inclusive. It was won by Vladimir Ridian, a mathematician, poet, and songwriter. He immigrated from Romania to Canada. It was first performed in public on June 27, 1997 by the Toronto Symphony Orchestra. Many used this new version to perform in various events. For example, on February 13, 1999, a slightly modified version of these lyrics was sung by Anne Murray before the final game played by the Toronto Maple Leafs at the Maple Leaf Garden. This version was also used by Michael Bobley to sing at the closing ceremonies of the 2010 Winter Olympic Games of Vancouver. In 1980, O Canada became the official national anthem of Canada, the East Quebec Separatist Movement. Still, the Maple Leaf Forever is a national treasure for many Canadians. The famous tree that served as an inspiration to Alexander Mir received tons of honors. In 1930, the Grand Orange Lodge of British America commemorated this tree with a plaque. However, in 1958, it was replaced by a newer plaque of which who was inspired to write Canada's national song, The Maple Leaf Forever, by the falling leaves of this dirty maple tree can be read. Sadly, the tree was destroyed on July 13, 2013, due to a severe storm. 48 logs were recovered from the tree and some were rotten. On March 8, 2014, a ceremony was held at the Toronto's Evergreen Brickworks, where the remaining logs were cut into smaller pieces. It was announced by the City of Toronto's Economic Development and Culture Department that the wood would be used on hundreds of projects. For example, in the Royal Ontario Museum, the House of Commons, the Museum of Civilization, and the Ontario Science Centre. Thanks for watching.
And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more videos. And bye.